be is choose to fight, choose to love, choose to believe. What's something that you believe in and fight for? I didn't come up with that tagline, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know, I mean, I guess this sounds, you know, boring, but I mean, honestly, it's my kids, my family. That's, that's really the only thing I fight for, I guess. <laughs> It's interesting that you would say that because your last two books, Breaking Dawn and Post, both had children in pretty difficult, intense situations. It Was that on purpose because family is so important or is that just how the story played out? I mean, I don't ever do anything on purpose, but I don't think it's an accident that my stories go towards that direction because... Uh, the relationship I have with my children, the amount of time I spend worrying about them, the amount of my mind that they control at any given point, you know, that so much of me belongs to them. Um, it's, I mean, I think my stories will always have some element that will reflect back to the, the way I feel about them because they're just, I mean, my family is the strongest relationship and the most life-changing one in my life where, you know, it's made me a different person and so that's going to come out in the stories subconsciously all the time. <laughs> kind of off subject, but what's going on with Anna Dress and Blood? Um, we're at a very early stage with the development. We're working on, on finding a writer for the script, but Down at Dark Hall is sort of the first on the mm -hmm, on the conveyor belt. I don't know how to say that right. And uh, and so that one, when we get when we get that to a place, then we'll kind of move on to Anna. Awesome. There were a couple different untimely outcomes for some of the characters in the film, rather than the book. Will that influence um, you writing their characters? Uh, untimely future? outcomes. What do you mean? Like Aaron and Brant dying, or oh. or the father killing no. himself. No, no. I mean, the the father killing himself happens in the novel. That's, oh. that's that's say, the same, although it's a little visually different out in the bayou. Or in the <laughs> pool, <really. laughs> um, but I mean, Aaron and Brant would still. I'm not going to off them because they, you know, they'll still be part of the story. I okay. I don't know. I mean, I think that there are some things that'll affect the fact that Sunny doesn't appear in the story. Yeah, it's I going to have to be. <laughs> because she's a, a larger character, and so that's somebody that is going to have to, uh, we're going to have to do something there. I mean, we're lucky we got Burns in, because that was the very end, you know, and, and he's also someone that I, I, I think when they originally were doing it, they were looking at um, hiring someone who was very physically different, just a day player in Louisiana, and I was like, oh, you might not want to tell yourself that. I'm just saying. <laughs> but, <laughs> Sometimes heads. It's, it's hard to be like, oh, just trust me on this one. Let's, mm -hmm. let's go a little younger. Let's not have him be 60. <laughs> okay, you started as an author. Now you're doing production. Do you see yourself long term splitting writing and also being a producer? Do you really like producing? It seems like you do. I do. You know, it's kind of, um, I don't know. Have you ever read a book and like imagined how it would be to film and like the actors and sort of cast your head? And I've always done that a little bit. I like movie adaptations. I almost always prefer the book. I cannot think of I think of only one exception. And I uh, I think that that's just something that I find fun. It's like, you know, dollhouses and dressing up your Barbies and whatever. It's like playing a game. Um, it's a whole different kind of creativity. Uh, it's, a, it's a more um, collaborative space where you actually have people to hang out with who aren't your imaginary friends, which can be nice too. Um, but the writing is a lot, uh, it's more of a pure, form for a creative outlet. You don't have to compromise on anything. Actors don't tell you no. You don't have to cut scenes out for length. It's You can do whatever you want. And that's, that's a more free situation, but you also have to have private time to do it, which is really hard to come by, even without the movies. My kids are growing up. They're more interactive. I, it's hard for me to uh, like really disconnect my brain from, from them as much as I could when they were little and, and didn't have as many conversations going on. Um, but so I, I do want to do both. I don't want to be as active as a producer, you know, physically there all the time. I'd rather be more involved at the beginning stages, the scripting, the casting, you know, that kind of stuff where I can do from home. Um, and that's why I have a partner, because she's going to do all the physical stuff. <laughs> and I'll just sit home and say, how's it going? It's very awesome. <laughs> so I'll be home writing, and she'll be out in the dirt and the dust and staying up all night doing night shoots. It's going to be perfect. What was the exception you said there was one movie? Oh, better. oh, um, probably the boring movies. I, I like that he really is an assassin. It kind of, I'd, I'd seen the movies first, and then you read the book, and like it's all cop out, and he's actually a good guy. No, no, I wanted to be a killer. So I like that.